Okay, this is a continuation of Chapter 2, Fluid Statics. The topic of this video is hydrostatic forces on curved surfaces. And so um, we're going to do some theory first, which mainly involves the use of free body diagrams. So if you're good with free body diagrams, uh, you should find this fairly straightforward. And then I'm going to do a couple of solved examples. What you'll find is... Uh, solving for hydrostatic forces on curved surfaces is a little bit more tricky than for plane surfaces. While we use the same basic method for each problem, each problem is slightly different. This sort of analysis is useful for the engineering design of liquid containment structures, such as storage tanks, shown here, dams, levees, ship hulls, submarine vehicles, that sort of thing. Once again, we're going to do this analysis for liquids. So we're going to assume the density is a constant. So pressure increases linearly with depth. The gauge pressure is just gamma H. And as I've shown over here for this uh, concrete dam, the local pressure is always normal to the bounding surface. And again, the goals of this analysis are to calculate the resultant forces on the surface which will usually decompose into a horizontal and vertical components. And we want to locate the line of action of each of those forces. Now, there are a number of ways to solve this kind of problem. For example, imagine we're considering this gate here with a liquid reservoir, and we're trying to calculate the force on surface AB. I mean, one way to do it is just to integrate the local pressure distribution, which might be simple for a simple case like this. But in general, it would be laborious. And a better way is to use a free body diagram approach. And in this approach, we isolate a section of fluid adjacent to the surface of interest. We draw a free body diagram on that fluid, and then we decompose the hydrostatic forces into the vertical and horizontal components, and we just apply simple static equilibrium. So that's going to be our basic procedure, and I'm going to do a couple of demonstrations. Okay, so for example, imagine you were considering this gate that I showed earlier, AB, and we're trying to calculate the hydrostatic force on AB. What we do is we draw a free body diagram for this section of the fluid. So we take the fluid adjacent to the gate, and we draw a free body diagram. And so we have the weights of the different components, and you'd break them up so they were easy to calculate. And we're interested in the force on surface AB, so we're after the vertical force and the uh, horizontal force. Now, these are the forces on the water. Of course, the forces of the water on the gate would be in the opposite direction. So clearly, in this case, you can see that the vertical force here is just equal to the, the two weights, weight one and weight two, which would equal gamma of the liquid volume one plus gamma of the liquid volume two. So the vertical component of the pressure force is just equal to the weight of the fluid above the surface. And we've talked about this many times in this chapter. Again, note that the free body diagram shows the forces on the liquid. So the hydrostatic force of the liquid on the gate would be downwards, even though this arrow points upwards. For the horizontal force, we just set the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction to zero. And you can see this is the force of the gate on the water. And we can imagine a hydrostatic force on surface AC. And you can see from static equilibrium that FAC equals FH. So we just need to calculate the force and location of the force on surface AC, and that's a plain vertical surface. We did that analysis in the previous uh, presentation, so we uh, will be using uh, the techniques for plain vertical gates for these curved surfaces. And so, yeah, you can see that FH here would be in line with FC, because they're the only two horizontal forces, and we can't have any moment, so they have to be in line. And FAC here would act at the center of pressure, so just below the centroid of surface AC. So we're going to use the plane gate methods to find FH and uh, YCP 
on surface AC. So that's a quick description of the general technique, and now we're going to do a couple of detailed examples. This example is taken from the midterm, 2015, so this is an actual midterm caliber problem. So we're talking about water, density of 998 kilograms per cubic meter, is contained behind a semicircular gate uh, with radius 2 meters. So we've got, here's our gate, AB, and it's hinged at A, and we're going to neglect the weight of the gate, just calculate the forces based on the, the hydrostatic forces. And so what we need to do in part A is calculate the horizontal and vertical components of the hydrostatic force on gate AB. We're going to assume unit depth into the page. And we want to be careful to clearly indicate the direction of the forces. That's worth quite a bit on a midterm because it indicates that you understand uh, the problem. And then in part B, we want to calculate the force here at applied uh, horizontally at point B to hold this gate in place. And that'll be a simple statics analysis. And I've shown here on the midterm, you were given uh, figure 2.13, which shows the centroids and uh, second moments of areas of uh, surfaces. So you have that at your disposal. Now, in this particular case, it doesn't ask you to draw the hydrostatic pressure distribution on the gate. But I, I strongly recommend you get in the habit of doing this, and it'll become clear in a moment. So here's our gate AB, and B is at the free surface, so the pressure goes to zero. And what I've drawn here is the using vectors is the pressure distribution on this surface. Of course, it would be high at A and zero at B, and all along the surface it would be normal to surface AB. So why would you draw this? Well, just looking at this distribution, this is the force of the water on the gate. We can see clearly that the horizontal force is going to be to the left, right? All of these arrows have, uh, except for the ones at the very top and very, well, this one's zero, but even the one at the bottom, except for this one at the bottom, they all have a horizontal component to the left. And you can see that, okay, there's some small arrows here that have an upward component, but the the Larger areas at the bottom of the distribution have a much larger vertical component. So you can see just looking at that and thinking about it that the net vertical force on the gate from the water is going to be downwards. So right away we know we know the directions. So now it's just a matter of getting the numbers. We start by in all of these problems by drawing a free body diagram of the water adjacent to the gate. So I've picked this little semicircle of, of water here, and I've redrawn it down here, and I've put on the forces. You've got the weight, you've got the vertical force. Now this is the force of the gate on the water. You've got the force of the gate on the water in the horizontal direction. And then this face here, AB, because we've we've cut it, we've cut this piece of water out and we've isolated it, it would have a hydrostatic pressure distribution on it, and this is the hydrostatic force on, on surface AB. And of course, we want to keep in mind that the forces shown in this diagram are the opposite of what, of what we're looking for. We're looking for the force of the water on the gate, whereas this diagram shows the forces of the gate on the water. Okay, so if we do a uh, static equilibrium in the vertical direction, so some of the forces in the vertical direction zero because this flu is not moving, we could just see that the, the vertical force is just equal to the weight of the water. And we've got the line of action here from our uh, table from our textbook. And so the, the weight of the water is the gamma times the volume. And the volume of this, this is a unit depth into the page. So the volume of that is going to be pi r squared divided by 2, because it's half a circle, times depth. So Fv is gamma volume, so gamma times pi r squared upon 2 times depth. So I've reproduced that equation up here, and that's just a matter of substituting in the values. The gamma of water, you're given in the problem that the density is 998 times g gives 9790 newtons per cubic meter. That's water at 20 degrees C. The radius of this gate is 2 meters, so pi 2 squared 
divided by two, and then that's the unit depth, and you get 61.51 kilonewtons. And you've got to make sure you indicate that the force of the water on the gate is down, even though, be careful, because this arrow shows up. That's the force of the gate on the water. And because there's only two vertical forces here, the sum of the moments have to equal zero. They have to be in line. And so we can calculate this distance 4r upon 3 pi. So 4 times 2 meters divided by 3 pi gives 0.848 meters from this face AB. So we have the magnitude, direction, and location of the vertical force. Next, we'll consider the horizontal force. So I've reproduced the free body diagram again here. By the way, when you're doing this on the exam, always draw a separate free body diagram. Don't draw it on the diagram of the problem because you need to isolate a section of water. And what we have is the force on surface AB, this vertical face. So we can use our techniques that we learned in the previous video for vertical gates to get the force AB. And that's got to equal FH. And they have to be in line because we can't have any moment. This thing's not spinning. It's, it's got no angular momentum. So FH and FAB have to be in line. And we can easily figure out where FAB is. It acts below the centroid at distance YC that we talked about for plane gates in the previous video. So I've drawn this surface AB here over here, and I've put the dimensions on. That's uh, one meter depth. And the total height of the surface is going to be two radiuses, which is four meters. And I've shown the center of area, the center of gravity here is going to be at 1R, so 2 meters. And the force AB acts, as we learned in the previous video, below the center of, of area. Uh, the center of pressure is always below the center of area. And so we can use our plane gate methods to determine the force. FH equals FAB. And the force on surface AB is gamma, height of the center of gravity, times area of surface AB. And the height of the center of gravity is just the dead middle of that plane surface, which is 2 meters. And the area is 4 meters by 1 meter. So we can substitute in here gamma. Here's our height of the center of gravity and the area. And we get uh, 78.32 kilonewtons to the left. Now again, students often get the arrows wrong. We already showed in the first part of this problem where we drew the pressure distribution that, that we expect the force to be to the left. So uh, make sure you get that straight. Okay, so now we have FH. The last thing to do is just to determine where FH acts, the line of action. And we, we treat, of course, AB as a plane surface. So it's using the methods for a plane gate that we learned in a previous video here. We can get the location of FAB. It acts below the centroid of surface AB by a distance of minus IXX sine theta. Now, in this case, it's a vertical gate. So theta is 90 degrees. The surface meets the free surface at an angle of 90 degrees. The height of the center of gravity of surface AB and area AB. These are pretty straightforward. This surface here, AB, has depth of one meter and height of four meters. So it's the depth times height cubed divided by 12. And we get a second moment of area. That would be the moment of area around a horizontal axis passing through the centroid of 5.333 meters to the fourth. And now it's just a matter of making the substitutions. IXX, sine of 90 degrees, which is 1. The height of the center of gravity of surface AB is, is 2 meters over here. And then the area of the surface is 4 meters squared. And we get that the force FAB acts at 0.667 below the centroid. So now we have both forces. We have the vertical force and the horizontal force, and we have their locations. So now it's possible to find that, that force at B required to 
hold the gate in place. So the last part of the question was to determine the horizontal force applied at B to the right that would hold the gate in place. And of course, we draw a free body diagram for our gate. We put all the forces on it. Don't forget there are hinge forces at A. So there's FAX and FAY. This is our horizontal force, hydrostatic force. There's the weight of the fluid, the vertical force. And I've put on the locations where they act. We just calculated that FH acts below the centroid at 0.6667 meters. And so I've taken some of the forces around point A. Now, don't forget we use point A because we want to avoid having to calculate these hinge forces. So we take the moments about A and I've taken clockwise as positive. So FB is, uh, has a clockwise moment and FH uh, and FV have negative moments. So this is basic statics. This is your statics course. So FB times 2R, that's the moment arm, equals FH. Now, this distance here is R. So this distance here is R minus YCP, which turns out to be 1.33 meters. So, and it's counterclockwise, so it's uh, minus. And then FV, we just showed that it acts at 0.8488 from the hinge in the horizontal direction. So there's the moment arm. And then it's just a matter of substituting in the, the forces that we have here. And recognizing that the moment arm for B is four meters, and you get an answer of 39.2 kilonewtons. I always recommend rounding final answers to three digits. And that completes this problem. Okay, I'm going to do another one. See if you can try to generalize this technique. So the basic technique is we're going to draw a free body diagram of the water adjacent to the gate and then apply basic principles of static equilibrium to get the force on the gate. So here we have another problem. This one's done all in symbolic form. I really recommend that you work in symbolic form before you plug numbers in. You'll get much more park marks that way. So we're just after figuring out what the forces, what the horizontal and vertical forces are on this section of the, uh, of the surface AB. And this surface has radius R and the bottom here, the bottom of this semicircular surface has a height or a depth in the fluid of H. So we want to draw a hydrostatic pressure distribution on surface AB, you're asked, and you want to derive expressions for the vertical and horizontal hydrostatic forces on surface AB, clearly indicating the directions of those forces. And we're going to take the tank as having a unit depth into the page. So this is a two-dimensional problem. Okay, so the first part is to draw the hydrostatic pressure distribution on this surface, AB. So we're going to start by drawing the pressure at A. Oh, and I've put some values in here. The pressure at A, point A is at depth H. So the pressure is going to be uh, gamma H. And now if you imagine the pressure at B, it's going to act normal to B, but it's, it's at a depth of, of uh, H minus R. It's at a shallower depth. So it needs to be a smaller arrow. So once you've got those two basic arrows in, with PB being less than PR, you can put the remainder of the pressure distribution in, uh, being careful to put them normal to the surface. And so if you were doing this on a midterm, I'd be looking to check that PA was visibly bigger than PB because pressure increases as you go down in the fluid. And you'd wanna, I'd want to check to make sure that your arrows are reasonably perpendicular to the surface AB. So that's, that's part A. One thing you should get from these pressure distribution diagrams is we can see right away the directions of the forces, of the force of the water on the gate. You can see that the horizontal force, all of these arrows have a force to the left. So the horizontal forces of the water on the gate is going to be to the left. And you can see all of these arrows, except for the very bottom one here, have an upward component. So the net hydrostatic force on the on surface AB is going to be up. So that's one of the values of drawing these hydrostatic pressure distributions. The directions of the forces will become instantly clear. So we're going to make sure we use those directions in our final answers. 
Okay, so let's go after the expressions for the vertical and horizontal forces. We draw a free body diagram of the water adjacent to the gate. I've picked this segment here, A, B, C, and I've redrawn it down here, A, B, C, and we have unit depth. So that's our isolated section of water. And we're going to put the forces on the water. So this face, BC, is at, is at a depth in the water. So it's going to have a hydrostatic force. And it's going to be balanced by the force of the gate on the water. So those are the horizontal forces. They're going to be in line because there's only two forces and we can't have a moment because we have no angular momentum. In the vertical direction, this face, AC here, is at a depth H, so it's going to have a pressure, a uniform pressure on this surface. So we're going to have an upward, so this is FAC. We would have a weight of this fluid element, and then we'd have the force of the gate on the water. So those are the vertical forces. Now we've drawn our free body diagram, which I've reproduced over here. Let's do our static equilibrium. So let's consider first some of the forces in the horizontal direction equals zero. So we have that the horizontal force, FH, is just equal to the hydrostatic force on this surface, BC. There's only two horizontal forces, FH and FBC, and they're in opposite directions, so they must balance. So all we have to do is calculate the, uh, to get the horizontal force is calculate the hydrostatic force on surface BC. This is a plain vertical surface. So it's going to be equal to the gamma times the height or the depth of the center of gravity times the area of this surface. So gamma height of the center of gravity of surface BC times the area of, of that vertical face BC. These are very easy to calculate. This, this, this centroid here, the center of area for BC, is located halfway between here and here. So at that's r upon 2. So this distance from this free surface is h minus r upon 2. So that's the depth of the centroid of, of uh, surface BC here. And the area of surface BC is just r times 1. This distance is r, and this distance is 1. So making the substitutions for gamma, hc, and abc, we get this simple expression. And as we showed with our pressure distribution, the force of the water on the gate, the hydrostatic force is to the left. So that's the answer for the horizontal component. Okay, let's do the vertical component. I've reproduced the free body diagram again over here. We have three vertical forces, the hydrostatic force on surface AC, the weight of this quarter circular fluid element, and then the force of the gate applies to the water. And it's pretty simple to see that this vertical force uh, has to balance uh, hydrostatic force minus the weight. So FV equals FAC minus W. So the weight of the fluid element is going to be easy to calculate. It's just gamma times the volume. So let's get the, the force on this surface. There's going to be the pressure on this surface times its area. Now, this is a horizontal surface. AC is horizontal. So if you imagine this surface here, AC, it has a uniform pressure distribution, and the pressure is just equal to gamma H. So the force on this surface is just gamma H times the area, which is R times 1. So there's the force on surface AC. The weight of the fluid element, it's a quarter circle. So pi R squared divided by 4 times unit depth this is volume times gamma. And so now making the substitutions for FAC and W, we get a rather simple expression for the vertical force on surface AB. And again, we showed earlier that the hydrostatic force on the surface from the water is upwards. And that completes this problem. Okay, before I end, I just thought I'd show you this. Have a look at this. So imagine you're trying to solve this problem here where we have a, a water in a tank. We have a semicircular, two-dimensional semicircular gate here, A, B, C. And I'm asking you to draw the pressure distribution on surface A, B. And I've got a number of options over here 
distribution one, two, three, four. Have a look at them. See if you can figure out which one is correct. Maybe pause the video. And of course, the answer is distribution number two. Uh, you can see that the pressure increases with depth and the arrows are all perpendicular to surface AB. So what's wrong with the other ones? Well, in distribution one here, the pressure at A is higher than the pressure at B, which is wrong because pressure increases with depth. Th this actually represents a number of different student errors that I've seen on exams. So I'm sort of warning you about the errors that you might, you might commit. A number of students draw the pressure distribution this way, increasing linearly, but with the pressure not acting normal to the surface. And this one is almost right, but it shows the pressure going to zero at point A, and point A is at a height H, so it can't be right. So distribution four is almost right, but not quite right. So being able to draw the pressure distribution on a curved surface is really helpful in figuring out the directions of the forces. You'll know instantly whether the force is upward or downward if you draw the correct uh, pressure distribution. It'll give you a physical intuition for the problem. So the next video is a worked example of this problem. We have water behind a gate. And this is a little more complicated one because uh, you've, you've got no water over the gate and yet you're trying to calculate uh, horizontal and vertical forces. So it's a little bit tricky. Have a go at it. You might have a go at it before you look at the video. A little hint is you consider the, the water adjacent to the gate here. And uh, again, you're after figuring out what the hydrostatic forces on surface AB and finding the line of action. So have a watch of that next video. If you feel confident about what you just learned, you could try this problem and then watch the video and see if you got it right. And that completes this video.